I don't even think it has to be dinner. I think any meal, even if it's once or twice a week, it's building connection. I think that life, social media, our phones, our technology, we're so overly zapped out. We don't have a lot of time and we have like a very firm 20 minutes of dinner every night. And it, it like, I know the kids have homework and they have practices and there's like, we're busy with work, but literally 20 minutes of connection, talking, hearing about each other's day, telling each other a joke, playing a game if it's younger kids, it really does like just set the tone and the mood. Dear Family is a podcast hosted by Rachel Steinman, a writer, an educator, and a mental health advocate. And Rachel gets us up close and personal, so we feel a strong connection, familiarity, and comfort with her guests. So settle in and join us as we search for true healing and journey with Rachel and her most interesting guests. Hi, dear family and friends. Get ready for another inspirational and eye-opening story. Thank you so much for listening. And if you aren't already doing so, please subscribe and share, dear family. It means the world to me and makes all the difference. Catherine McCord has the Midas touch. She's a successful entrepreneur, food blogger, writer, TV personality, wife, and mother to three. On top of all of that, she's beautiful and one of the nicest people you will ever meet. I honestly don't know how she does it all, but she does it with grace and humility, often in front of a camera. Catherine was born in Louisville, Kentucky, and by the time she was 14, she was already modeling for elite models. She's appeared on Glamour and Elle, and she's walked the runway for Donna Karen and Calvin Klein. She went on to become a co-host of MTV's Loveline, and she's appeared in TV and movies. But in a departure from acting and modeling, Catherine combined her love of food and her degree from the Institute of Culinary Education with the challenges of motherhood to create Weelicious. Her website and blog help parents expose their children to wholesome, delicious homemade food, making her the most trusted content resource that's synonymous with family and food. Her online how-to videos have amassed more than 50 million views. The reader and the viewer love how she takes what her grandmother taught her in the kitchen with what she finds on her farmer's market halls to create delicious and doable recipes for busy parents and families. She's the author of three books, Weelicious, Weelicious Lunches, and The Smoothie Project. Chances are you've seen her on Today, Good Morning America, The Doctors, Naturally Danny Seo, or Guy's Grocery Games, where she's a regular. To continue to make parents' lives easier, Catherine co-founded One Potato, an organic home meal delivery kit service that's meant for families. When Catherine's son started suffering from chronic nausea and doctors just couldn't help her, she turned her experience with nutrition for an answer. And the solution was simple. It was smoothies. She began sharing her family's story and her favorite smoothie recipes on social media, and the smoothie project was born. She quickly found smoothies reduced stress and anxiety, helped to lose weight, control ADHD symptoms, and so much more. Catherine reminds us, eating healthy food with our family is joyful. And when you aren't having delicious and nutritious smoothies, try to slow down and carve out some time to enjoy a family meal. Hi, Catherine. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for being here today. I know how busy you are, especially considering your book is launching on the 17th of December. I know. I can't even believe it. I know. It's so exciting. So I just want to share a little personal story. And that is that your oldest son is a year younger than my youngest daughter. And I remember meeting you at school and thinking how beautiful you were. And then I think we volunteered at some event together and I realized how sweet you are and just kind. And it's so fun to watch you on Instagram because you feel like you're almost like part of your family within your family. And I immediately bought your book, Weelicious. I want you to know that your tortilla soup is a staple literally every week, practically. And I'm going to make it tonight, like eight years later. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's just so like what I love about it, it's nutritious, it's easy, it's doable. And that is why I think you're so successful. You're supposed to be simple. Yeah, no, it is, which is great. And I've told so many people about that recipe. (laughs) 
because this is a podcast called Dear Family, I'd love to just hear a little bit about your family. Oh my gosh. Well, I have a husband who I've been with for almost 20 years. I have a 12-year-old son, a 10-year-old daughter, and a four-year-old daughter. And we're just like a little tribe of five. Amazing. Amazing. And they're beautiful children that we get to see. I just have to ask, because when I was looking into your background, were you discovered at 13 years old? Yep. That yep. is unreal because I have a 14 year old. So I can't imagine that. I can't even like every time I think about like what my parents were. Yeah, I did the Lazarus model the year. It was like a department store. And then I did the Gitano jeans look of the year, which is so silly. And then nothing happened. I'd gotten a card from a local John Casablanca center. And I walked in and I was like, I was thinking about taking classes. And they were like, Whoosh. and I ended up doing the look of the year and winning in the United States and going on to Japan. And it was like on ABC. And I was like literally 13, just turned 14. They just turned 14. And I was in Japan for a month. With your um, mom? No, no, no. Like on national television with <laughs> oh producers. And I was the youngest kid in the contest. Wow. It was wild. It was wild. That but. is amazing. Yeah. I mean, so you really have had quite a life. I mean, starting so young. Don't ask and my mother. My mother is always like, what was I thinking? I'm so sorry. Well, like, she listened to her intuition and obviously, you know, was right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, so that's right. amazing. Your parents look back and they're like, what were we thinking? My mother does. My dad is always like, oh, I knew. Yeah, I mean, I knew it was going to be okay, but right. they're like, I mean, I talk to my parents every day. I mean, I always have, we have you know, a pretty deep connection. So I think that I was one of the luckier ones. Incredible. Yeah. So you had that family support always like to check in with. Can you tell us how did you decide to go into culinary school from acting and modeling? I know it doesn't seem like the most natural choice. So my grandparents were just very into picking and growing their own food. So I got the bug very early and like started collecting cookbooks when I was nine. And, you know, my grandmother like cooked everything and, you know, had a jar of bacon grease that she cooked everything with, you know, but it was like homemade food. And I just became very like fascinated with it at a young age. And once I started modeling, I was in different cities every few days, different countries, seeing the way that people ate. And I was always fascinated with why kids in other countries eat in like Mexico, spicy. Tortillas, spices, <laughs> spices, like wide variety of foods. And yet in America, food in general seems very like dumbed down. I couldn't understand that. And I think that that's always been sort of like a through line of my life. And it's probably a generalization of me to say, but as a model and somebody that is so in touch with food, yeah. that's kind of like, I don't know, is it oxymoron? It's or? a total oxymoron. <laughs> There were definitely times in my life because I was, I tended to be younger than other girls that I was modeling with. So I think that there was a confusing time for me, definitely in my teen years, because genetically I've never had to like be concerned about it. But a lot of the girls that I was around, it was, you know, modeling agencies telling you, you know, you have to be this weight. So there was just like a lot of pressure. It's not like today where it's so taboo that you would, you know, you just don't comment on people's weight, but the industry was very different. Back then, yeah. And also, I mean, genetically, you didn't have to worry, but you also were eating probably whole foods and that is healthy. Yeah. But it was also, even because I grew up in Kentucky, so I had half of it that was like fresh food, real food, homemade meals every night. And then the other part was like McDonald's and KFC and (laughs) drive-thru. This is like the right. 80s, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Really, yeah. I remember like, my mom making frozen chicken totally. constantly. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. freezer meals. Right, like, freezer. So yeah. I did have the yin yang. And it's very weird to me that I still have a connection between eating things that made me feel good and things that didn't and how that resonated with me. And I think and you're still also, doing that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're still doing that. So tell us how Weelicious was born. Weelicious was born because I'd gone to culinary school and was working between New York and LA in different restaurants and catering companies. And then I had my son and I realized I could cook a four-star meal, but I had no idea what to feed him. And I was like going on websites and like trying to find all this information. And this was like 12, almost 13 years ago. And there just wasn't as much information readily available. So I started this little blog called Weelicious and really was just much more of a resource than anything for other moms sharing my experience using chat rooms. It was like so far back then. 
it was like chat rooms and it's funny. It's Facebook. not that long ago, I, but, but it's, but in technology it's terms, it is. Yeah. I never used that. So, I was doing a homemade recipe every single day. Amazing. I mean, I have like, you know, SEO from, you know, years and years ago, but it was really a new recipe every day. And I just realized that I was working literally seven days a week. I mean, it was just so much content. I didn't take any ad sales. I just felt like this was my service to the world. And then I just realized like, this is a really a business. And I wrote my first cookbook and then my second cookbook right after it. It just like, grew really fast. And I think that the reason for that was just there was a need. And I think this generation of parents like, wants to cook. They want to feel connected to their families. It's not in the past generation where it was like prepared food, fast food. You know, there was so much like revolutionary foods that came out and ways of eating. And it's just been interesting, like every 10 years to watch how it's changed. But when I said you have the Midas touch, it's because it was partly the timing, right? That wasn't there, but you used your probably hosting and co-hosting and modeling and your culinary and your nutrition to build this platform that really resonated. So that's amazing. Well, I always say like for anyone and everyone, like don't ever look at any job you take in your life as a waste of time because between the people that you meet, the experience that you get, like there's no job that should be below you or even above you. Because I think that that's when I look back now, I'm like, Oh, that's why I was doing all these jobs, you know, or like different things. And and also, even when you're helping somebody, you don't realize like how that experience of pushing yourself to help somebody can also like change. One of my favorite Instagram stories is yours. Mm -hmm. And I love the Sunday Hollywood Farmers Market and the hauls that you get. It's just very inspirational. And what time are you arriving at the market? Every Sunday, I go to the Hollywood Farmer's Market. I've shopped there for, I guess, like 24 years. Oh, wow. So I like to get there early when it's nice and quiet. Right. And like you get the first pick. Are you getting there like 6 a.m. kind no, of thing? I no, I get there. Like I try to get there between like 7.45 and okay. 7.45 and 7.48. Yeah, you but that's it. a big deal. Like for me, the weekends, my girls just want to sleep in. So like you've got your kids like. No, because Chloe, like my kids love going with me. So okay. I almost always, but it's the same right, thing. Because like, it's a time to be with you it's and, good. And, and it's fun for them. It's so fun it's for them. Fun. It's church. And they all know, they know, they know all the vendors. It's so know, great. In Hollywood, California, which is yes. not exactly known for being a safe space. Right. I will let them. You just let them yeah, run and, let and them every do, vendor know knows everyone. them. That's it's, awesome. It really is like a it's And like they're a probably also like, come over here, try this. So your mom will buy it. It's amazing. No, because the farmers, they are amazing because they'll let kids have anything it's inspiring like yeah, farmers like yeah. work all so hard and they just want people they to want try their also their kids goods. to be exposed yes. and we are very lucky to live where we live where we have such a variety where does your love for cooking come from does it come from your family i think it comes from probably my grandmother i think it was traveling and my grandmother for the most part i don't know i just and even my mother like she used to throw dinner parties and she would pay me a quarter to like pass the appetizers. And I was allowed to have a piece of her homemade pie, you know, when everyone left. And I don't know, there was just moments for me. I just, I like food. I like the, what it means. I like, you know, the symbolizes for families. And sometimes it's not even what's on the plate, but what it does bringing communities together. We were just talking about you, like you're doing something tonight. You're doing something tomorrow. Right. And the food is secondary to the experience of connection. It's so true. And I mean, I have to say, Speaking of my family, it's all about food. Yeah. We love to talk. We'll be eating a meal and talking about our next Totally. <laughs> my in-laws do that. We're at one meal and they're like, what are we going to have next meal? I wonder if that's a Jewish thing. I don't know. They're, they're, my they're Jewish too. So maybe that. that <laughs> right, right. My, my dad is I, the opposite. He's I like, don't. just order for me. It's right. Fine. Isn't that so funny? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Love it. Love it. <laughs> okay. So I have to say that you do definitely make it look easy. Part of why it's so appealing is because it is easy, but you make it really look easy. And this new book, The Smoothie Project, really is kind of like what I had read. It's that it seems so simple, but it really is the answer to so much. And you just have to be a little prepared with ingredients, but then it can last for months, depending on how much you put in your freezer, oh my gosh, right? So much. So again, I'm going to share a little personal story. Molly, when she was in kindergarten, she got Lyme disease oh and she's fine now, thank God. But she had gone antibiotics for six months and it was this whole very scary moment. And I had to cut sugar and gluten 
out of her diet. Now, sugar, as you know, is really hard to cut out, but I ended up getting a Vitamix. And ever since we got that, I mean, we're constantly using it, but I often fall in the rut of making the same smoothie. It's this green smoothie with like bananas and dates and spinach. It's it's delicious, delicious. but it's the same thing. And that's what I love about the smoothie project because, well, your book, first of all, it's got these beautiful photos and it's just easy to follow all the rainbow. But what I want to talk about and part of the reason why I asked you to come today is because, you know, this podcast is about wellness. And you talk in your book about things like ADHD Mm -hmm. and eczema and digestion and gastro problems and all of those things, if they're not handled, it's not just physical issues. It can really affect your emotionally. And you even talk about chemotherapy, Mm -hmm. which I was really touched by because Mm -hmm. that's something probably people don't think about. My first question is, how do you have all this nutritional knowledge? It's so funny because that's something probably more than anything that I've even more than like my obsession with cooking has always been nutrition because I'm fascinated why certain foods have certain nutrients and how other foods eating combined together help you absorb the nutrients. You know, in America, especially like we go to like waffles and pancakes and, you know, toast and bread. It's just like carbs, 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 first thing in the morning pizza, anything, but especially like, then you're supposed, you're like telling your kids or yourself, like it's time to go to work. And then you just feel like sluggish. And your kids are like, if you're sending them with, you know, pancakes and maple syrup, which is like a natural sugar, but like, what is it? They're just going to feel like, you know, their brains are definitely not being fired. So for me, that's really where the smoothies came in was when I started to realize that by eating the foods that fire your brain and all of a sudden make you feel good, your digestion feels better. Like if you feel good, you just perform better because you're not being distracted by what's happening physically with you. It's so true. And this was somewhat born out of your son waking up feeling nauseous. Yep. He's a vegetarian, right? So Kenya became a vegetarian yeah. when he was five years old, okay. totally Fair by enough. his own choice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I am not a vegetarian. Yeah but I very much support his choice. And he just, he's a kid that doesn't complain. He never has, never wants to skip school or anything like that. And this just went on for months where he just wasn't feeling good. And you could just see it in him. He just felt terrible. And there wasn't any reason that we could find why he was feeling this way. And I read this book, this called Cure Your Kids with Food. And there was this line in it about smoothies, just like a line. And I remember thinking, oh, all right, let me, maybe I'll try that. And the next day I created, it's now on Wheelicious. It's a smoothie project sheet. And it was just, it's little pictures of fruits and vegetables and proteins. And I handed it to him and I was like, look, let's just try making a smoothie tomorrow. Okay. Let's just vary it up. I let him, you know, in a very Wheelicious way, he got to pick what went in the smoothie and we did it. He loved it. Day one, he was like, this is delicious. And he was in control. He was like, I'm getting to be, you know, instead of being a passive, here's your breakfast. He was like an active participant. And then the next day we did a different one. And then this continued for a few weeks. We almost like forgot that he wasn't feeling good. And then at the end of three weeks, it was like, oh, it was just like revelation that instead of putting certain foods that he was as a vegetarian eating as a kid vegetarian, you know, more carbohydrates, cheese, you know, things that weren't really working in his body. And it wasn't until we started, you know, this like idea of having smoothies every morning and four and a half years, almost five and a half, five years later, we still all have a smoothie every morning. That is so amazing. And you were, start, and you start sharing them online yeah. and everybody was. I never would have done it. I never yeah. in a million years. It was just like, I was really into it. I was seeing this change. And then when my baby was born, she was like, every morning we'd be having our smoothies and I was holding her and she was like bobbing her head to get at my straw. And the next thing you know, I put her on the table, made her a little smoothie. She sucked it down. We thought it was the funniest thing ever. And I started putting it on social media just because it was like cute. And people just, their reaction. I realized like, why are babies having baby food? Like a straw is this amazing way for them to work on their oral motor skills. And they're sucking down all this nutrition that they're not going to get with homemade baby food or a pouch or a jar of baby food. So it was like... I have to say, I loved watching her do it was that. So I mean, she, she also has the biggest smile Aww. and these big blue eyes. She's so, so adorable. Gosh. But I have to say, because in my former life, I was a teacher. Oh, and exactly 
what you did with that chart is like, you deserve like a gold star for it. All the gold stars, you shouldn't give gold stars. But <laughs> to give your kids the power to choose makes them feel so much better. And then they're much more likely to do it again. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the, I mean, look, yeah. at the end of the day, the reason- It's the psychology of, a little bit. Oh, yeah. food is all psychology. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that for the most part, if you make kids, like allow them to be part of the process, then they're like, oh yeah, I'll try that. You know, like the two right. choices. Right, I love that. I love that. You talk about in the Smoothie Project that literally in 28 days, you can change your life. Yep. And so for the listeners, can you just explain that? A hundred percent. So there is no like science yeah. to it. It's what I'm saying is that like, what is your regular morning routine? If you can commit to like making any of the recipes in the book, and that's why there are a hundred recipes because it's everyone has like different flavors and tastes. You have different reasons you're going to be consuming different ingredients. But if you commit to having a smoothie for 28 days, it's almost like a meditation. You're putting good foods in your body at the beginning of the day. So you're doing an automatic reset from the very beginning. And then it's almost like you're like, wow, I'm going to high five myself. Because I just had a fruit and a vegetable and a protein right in the morning. So the rest of the day, I think sometimes you're making either different decisions or you might just say, hey, I've got my daily allowance, but you're setting your track on a different path. So it's not a diet by any means. This is just like a project. I like how you look at it as a meditation. Oh, you're just proud of yourself. That's been the feedback from, yeah. you know, from four and a half of years of doing this is people just messaging me like, it's changed my life because I'm proud of myself. Right. You know, I'm doing something I know is good for myself. It's amazing how self-care, it's like self-love, how it can affect. How would a smoothie help with ADHD? Right. So you can go through the book. I worked with different people. I tried different things. So like, let's just talk about ADHD. Worst things for a child with ADHD are things like sugars, artificial sweeteners, saturated fats. Those are the things that can exacerbate the symptoms of ADHD. So by putting in fruits and vegetables, especially proteins, fiber, so important. Vitamin C, also very important. When you start to realize that how diet can affect certain conditions like ADHD, all of a sudden you're like, there's such an aha moment. So I really, if someone has ADHD or someone in their household, like I really encourage them to try the smoothie project because you can see symptoms go away. That's incredible. That's so cool. And then can you explain to us how you eat based on your age? Yes. So I always loved it. Like when you get like a Vogue or an Allure magazine and it's like in your twenties, in your thirties, in your forties. So I encourage people to like, look at what's going on with them. So the 100 recipes are really like bases. And there's not 100 green smoothies. There's chapters on berries and decadent. There is a green chapter, a seasonal chapter, but really looking at what's going on in your body. So like, you know, for women, so in your 30s, 40s, 50s, you want to be having collagen peptides every day because it's great for your hair, skin, nails, elasticity. Like you see, is it a miracle like overnight? No, but if you have it like over time, like I never had Thank you for nails. reminding me, by the way, I have it. I always forget to see, use it's it. It's like one of those things, <laughs> but like once you know, like every day, like if you're looking for like hair, skin, nails, right. like the things that yeah, are like- That are important to us at this age. Exactly. <laughs> then you're like, yeah. oh, if you're younger, you want to definitely be having those omega-3 fatty acids. So that's like chia seeds and hemp seeds. If you're a vegetarian, throw in a Brazil nut because it has selenium. A lot of vegetarians don't get oh, proper selenium. That's another really good one yeah. for ADHD. So you look in the book, it's like, that's why I think people go to Whole Foods and they're like, they go to the smoothie section. It's like so overwhelming. You have no idea. Like, what are these ingredients? So the book really like breaks down what the ingredients are and why they're good for you at different Well, ages. I have to say also what I love about the book, it's very organized, but it's not overwhelming yeah. at all. I can't so stand yeah, it's really well done. So I'm really Thank happy you. to have one. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So I know that you've said before that your kids are like guinea pigs in that, you know, they're always tasting your family recipes. And like I said, your baby's been on Instagram since, you know, before since. she could say her name probably. Right. But you know, us as parents, we have to make a concerted effort to not always be on our phone. 
Do you feel like you have to like, we have boundaries. Do you have those talks? Yes. Yes. So we definitely have boundaries, like no phones at the dinner table. If there's like this very funny moment, I'll like almost like ask permission. Right. You can see it like even on social media for the most part, it's all revolves around food. Right. And I also like, I'm super sensitive to my children. And now that my children are getting older, that that we have like a, it's 99% of the time, it's all around food. Right. No, I know. And it's so funny. Just last night I was sitting down with Amber, we were eating dinner and I pulled out my phone. She's like, good job, mom. You're, you know, like she called me out. I'm like, I'm sorry. You're right. Thank you for pointing. It out. It's really hard. It's, it's really hard. And, 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 and work, I mean, phones are work. It's not, I you know, know, it's for, for kids. It's a toy for us. It's work. And, you know, just wait until your kids become teenagers. So I actually just wrote a essay and a podcast on sharenting, which is this like, it's this phenomenon where parents overshare information about their kids. Now yours is different because you're not sharing activities that they're doing outside necessarily, or maybe you are, but I have this podcast called Dear Family and they won't even let me use their images, no. right? Or it, anything because yeah. they're teenagers now. Yeah. And Amber gave me a whole lecture on consent. And I was like, okay, it's you're really totally tricky. right. I know you're such a conscientious mother and you do not have to answer this. We can totally no, get rid it. of this. But do you ever worry about their privacy? We had to like have a sit down about a year ago about it because it really was, that moment where we realized like now anything is possible. So we try like birth dates and like age we're okay with, but they can never see my husband. Like I don't put him on at all. He wants like, that's his. Yes. Like, my husband a, feels kind of the same, same way. <laughs> and that's, you know what? And I like very respect, respect it. Yes. With my older kids, I have to approve before I post something. Right. And like I said, I think that for me, it's like it revolves around food and my kids are so proud of that. They like love it. Right. So, you can tell. You so, can tell that they're like, let me get in and say something. Exactly. So that's like, so, great. And, and they all have right. like, a different opinion right. about it. So like Kenya went with me to the seed event that's all about seeds and how that's growing food. And it was just this big event with chefs and everything. And he was like, please post about this. He's like, I want other people to know. And he was my date. And so I think that again, when they have a hand in it, and I'm not like at their school play putting them right, on social right, media. Right, right, right. Exactly. Well, they me. have ownership of it. Exactly. But like, I just, you know, it's funny because it's like, I remember seeing Gemma and I was like, I felt like I knew her and she was like, who are you? Really? <laughs> oh, believe me. <laughs> you I, know, yeah, she no, must it, get it that. Happens now. Yeah, it yeah. does happen. And she's too young to like understand it. But I think that Kenya has been, because he's 12, almost 13. And like I've said to him and he really knows, like, look at the effect you're having for other, like you're getting to be a really good role model. And I think that's he, right. that, that he takes very, I think that, that that can be a positive for some kids that if you feel like you can impact others in a positive way, like there's nothing in Relicious that is negative. No, because nothing. It's, it's, I don't feel yeah, that Yeah, well, it's about family connections yeah. and health yeah. and yeah. I know that Kenya is a vegetarian. Amber is a pescatarian. I'm going to just quickly talk about One Potato, which is this incredible organic home delivery food. What would we call it? Sista? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you get two or three meals every week. They're all organic. They take 10 to 30 minutes to make. And everything's like very DIY. So that no matter what kind of eater you have in your family, you can make something based on like, you know, what you really love. So as a parent, you're not like a short order cook making something different for everyone. Right. But the idea is that, you know, you can, but it's all about inclusivity and really more than anything, just two working parents. We're exhausted. We don't have any time. We're trying to be conscientious with our finances. So the meals are like affordable, all organic, and they come to your front door. So you're like, for me, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it saves me. I don't know how people do it. It's that a is lot. amazing. And I love that it's organic. And I think I read that like everything can be recycled. Yeah. We're very like a green company too. Yeah. We want to be like that it's compostable, recyclable. That's so great. We're, it's re- that's so, really, that's really amazing. And you're also in a weird way, kind of teaching parents how to cook, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the idea. I mean, like yeah. my babysitter, she had never cooked a day in her life. Yeah. And her first one potato meal, she was like, oh my God, look I what I did. I she's sending me pictures. <laughs> and she was like, I can't believe it. So it is because, you know, it's semi-prepared. So we do a lot of the hard work, but 
because it's all step by step and you have everything there. It just like cuts to the chase for someone. And you have does. vegetarian yes. options. Vegetarian, gluten free, nut free. Amazing. Everything. Amazing. Wow. You are a busy woman. <laughs> oh my God. And then I'm thinking also on top of all the hats you wear, in a weird way, you might almost be like a therapist to some parents because so many parents complain about their kids not eating vegetables. Mm-hmm. And when I was a teacher, I remember sometimes parents saying, I don't know what to do. My kid will only eat hot dogs and mac and cheese. I'm well, thinking unless like, they have the keys to your car, and you're the problem. <laughs> I'm the same way. Like, I know when parents are like, hello, me, goldfish. I'm like, well, where is he getting the goldfish? He's right, three. Right, right. So, and I know it's hard. Like, and they all, the and, and, and kids do have different palates. Yeah. And I just heard about this. There's something called super tasters. Like there's oh, people yeah. that actually cannot stand chocolate, which I don't understand. So like you're dealing with different personalities, yeah. different palates. But like, what do you say to those parents that who's like, would you suggest? them starting with smoothies smoothies are the best like give your kid in the smoothie project and like let your kid take tabs and put them in the pages that they want it's not up to you it's up to them and then you like have the ingredients in the house it makes it so simple and the recipes in the smoothie project range from like cotton candy smoothie which is just a few like simple like frozen strawberries milk frozen cauliflower it's like so simple and it literally tastes like pink milk like strawberry milk or cotton candy and then there's ones that are like crazy healthy smoothie that are going to be much more that's like my husband's smoothie that he makes it's like 40 ingredients it's crazy <laughs> but that's that person too there's like literally is that one included oh yeah that's oh, okay. but his is like the base recipe uh-huh. and then there's like all the, all the things acid, you can add, add yeah and, yeah. Super boost that you can and add. one of the things that i noticed that i really liked was that you talk about if you want to get a vegetable in to use frozen cauliflower because yeah, it's best. white and it doesn't turn the smoothie to like a brown color exactly because that's why a lot of Which kids, little kids kids are very visual yeah. so when it's like Bright blue, bright red, yes. bright, you know, purple. They're like, oh, I love it. The second it changes to pond sludge color, right. they're like, no matter how it tastes, <laughs> exactly. they're like, I don't Even want adults, this. let's exactly. be honest. Totally. I so appreciate that because I had Amber who, when she was a baby, she would eat raw zucchini. She would oh. eat anything. I mean, anything I put in front of her. And Molly, not so much. Yep. But her palate has changed. And it's partly from me not stopping saying, try this, just try it yeah. or exposing her. And now she's more adventurous. It's amazing. And I always yeah. encourage people to like, get a piece of paper, a whiteboard, have your child write out the 10 healthy foods that they love right. and really like be proud of them. Let right. them be proud of themselves for the things they do eat versus all the things they don't eat. Right. Because when they're able to see that and build upon it, they're proud of themselves. You also would make an amazing teacher because that because <laughs> you start with the positive always with yeah. kids or with adults, with anybody. That's really important. We try to have family meals too. It doesn't always happen. If you were counseling families or really anyone, why do you think getting together for a meal is so good for our mental health? I don't even think it has to be dinner. I think any meal, even if it's once or twice a week, it's building connection. I think that life, social media, our phones, our technology, we're so overly zapped out. We don't have a lot of time. And we have like a very firm 20 minutes of dinner every night. And it, it like I know the kids have homework and they have practices and there's like, we're busy with work, but literally 20 minutes of connection, talking, hearing about each other's day, telling each other a joke, playing a game if it's younger kids. It really does like just set the tone and the mood. I mean, my parents, I had family dinner five o'clock every single night. And I, wow. Can, oh, it was religion. Wow. There was no two ways about it. And I really believe, you know, that's why we probably have such a strong family unit. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's obviously not really realistic for a lot of people to have dinner at five o'clock every that night. That was like, a different generation. Yeah, it was a different generation. Like, yeah, ours is I mean, I'm lucky if Todd's home, you yeah. know, I totally agree with that. I mean, just carving out that time and what, even once a week, yeah you even know once a week to, to look, look forward, forward to, to and check in yeah. and whether you're religious or not just being grateful for family yeah. and food it's just it's amazing how that can really just help ground you a hundred percent and it does like you may not realize it but kids really do look forward to it and you know it can be something as simple as like Here's a cookbook. What should we make? I'll buy the ingredients or we'll food shop together, whatever it is, because 
kids look at food also as art. So if you treat it like an edible art project, all of a sudden it becomes a lot more fun. Yeah. An edible art project. I love that. And I have to say, I'm very proud of Amber. She totally can cook. She's going to go off to college and know how to do it all. And I feel like kids don't know, they don't have those skills anymore. No, I don't know many kids who don't want to cook in some way. If parents invite kids in, because I think for a lot of kids, they're like, oh, that's where my parents they do that. Right. So it, encouraging them, like here's a kid safe knife and a cutting board, go to town. That's right. Because like my kids will just sit there and give them a bell pepper and they do this totally unconsciously, but they're like one for my mouth, cut one for the dinner, one for my mouth. And I'm like, it's the best because yeah. we're just like hanging out, chatting. Yeah. I know. I know. It's one of my favorite things is to be in the kitchen with them. Catherine, if you could write your younger 20 year old self. So when you were 20 years old, were you Still modeling, modeling and oh, yeah. were you living in New York, New York. or you were living in New York? Okay, so <laughs> you're 20 years old and you're going to write your future self a love letter, a dear Catherine love letter. What do you think you would have said? I think that I would have said it's going to all be okay because I was at that point in my life just traveling nonstop and I used to literally just pray, like, I just want to be happy because I think there was a point in my life where I was so lonely that you just traveling nonstop. Anyway, so I am so grateful and I don't take any of this for granted because it's turned out so much better than I could have ever imagined. That is so amazing. And I'm so happy for you. And I think a lot of that does come from your drive, clearly, but also that family connection that like when you were feeling lonely, you knew that they were there, right? Yeah, that's awesome. I think I know the answer to this, but I'd love to hear from you. Do you have any happiness habits? Is there anything that you do that really grounds you? I mean, I don't want my smoothie in the morning. (laughs) I swear to God, my husband and I will laugh. And I only say this, it's not about me, it's about my husband. But he was working for five years. He was working six day weeks and like literally like 14 hours a day. It was crazy. And he would leave every morning and not exercising, barely seeing the kids, exhausted. And he would literally live every morning and be like, at least I have my smoothie. And that's what he would say every day. And I was like, God, it's so true. It's like, so I would say that that really, really makes me happy. I think breakfast, like the beginning Are you a coffee of the drinker? Day, I drink decaf. Oh, okay. I have enough okay. charging You have enough, you don't need it. I because I have to say like coffee to me in the morning is my like zen, oh. but maybe I should which just no, you can have both. <laughs> I have, have both. I have okay. both. I have so you have your, your hot coffee and yes. your cold smoothie. All right. Okay. Oh, I, I love, love my decaf. <laughs> Don't ever take it away from me. Okay. Good to know. Um, good to know. I'm going to. Yeah. But I would say my smoothie and like, honestly, like, I mean, my happiness is I travel with my kids one-on-one. And so I spend basically all year like thinking about Planning that about where one-on-one you're gonna go. time because I just think that like life is so crazy. I like, I treasure one-on-one with anyone. Like just that, that sort connection. Of connection. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Your trip to Iceland looked amazing. The best. The best. And you know, your son will remember that forever, yeah. right? Yeah. How cool. That's yeah. so special. Yeah. So where can the listeners find you? You can find me at Wheelicious everywhere. So social media, Instagram, Facebook, everything okay. is Wheelicious. And I'll have all the links, yeah. including to your book. And the show notes. Wheelicious, Wheelicious. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really appreciate, I appreciate you time. coming. So it fun. means a lot so to fun. me. Best of luck with your book and everything. Here and, we go. And, <laughs> yeah, so exciting. This is Rachel Steinman. For more information or to contact me with any questions, comments, or guest ideas, please check out rightnowrachel.com. That's right with a W. Thank you so much for listening, subscribing, and sharing, dear family. And if you found value in what you've just heard, I would love and so appreciate a great review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Until next time, I wish you love, happiness, and good mental health.